You're listening to the Archaeology Podcast Network. You're listening to the Archaeology Show. TAS goes behind the headlines to bring you the real stories about archaeology and the history around us. Welcome to the podcast. Hello and welcome to the Archaeology Podcast, episode 30. I'm Chris Webster, and it's just me today. On today's show, I'm going to ramble on about a number of things, including some Archaeology as Public Outreach, the ARC 365 podcast, other shows on the APN, and some details about our membership. I just thought it was time to do that 30 episodes in, in case you aren't listening to our other shows. Let's dig a little deeper. Okay, as I said, I'm Chris Webster, and I'm flying solo today, and uh, this will be a shorter show, but I just wanted to talk to you guys about a few things that you may not be aware of. First off, Shortly after we started this podcast in 2016, um, on January 1st, 2017, we started the ARC 365 podcast, which is a daily podcast. That's right. It happens every single day. Some of them are as much as 15 minutes, maybe a little longer, but most of the shows are, you know, two, three, four minutes long. They're intended to be bite-sized chunks that you can literally listen to every single day. Um, And I won't feel bad if you fast forward through the credits at the end, because uh, sometimes when we have a shorter show, because there isn't much on that topic, um, the intro and outro stuff can actually be longer than the subject matter, <laughs> but that doesn't happen all the time. So uh, check that out. Go listen to it. Um, we've finished all the writing for 2017. I'm just getting them all recorded and we're getting them posted. Um, if you're, We'll talk about memberships later, but if you are a uh, standard or um, let's say it's a standard or professional member, then you have early access to those shows and you can actually finish out the year here in a couple of weeks uh, once we're done. You can finish them all out and listen to them at your leisure in a higher quality uh, format as well. So not that the normal shows that you're listening to like this one now are low quality, but we'll get into that later. Okay. So anyway, ARC365, one of the cool things about the APN website at arcpodnet.com is right on the home page we have a search field okay just so you understand how that works if there's anything you're interested in about archaeology uh there's two ways to search things i guess actually three ways to search things on the archaeology podcast network if you're interested in a particular topic on the home page you can just type in that search field any word or phrase or anything you want it will search all of our show notes and episode titles across the entire network there's over a thousand um, episodes currently on there And it will search everything. It won't search the actual audio file. That's not quite possible yet with this current platform. I've heard there are some things working on that, but that's not possible yet for what we're doing. But it will search our show notes. And mostly uh, what we're talking about in the episode is probably mentioned in some way or another in the show notes. So you'll probably get the gist of it there. Uh, Another way to search is to go to that show. So click on any of the icons on the homepage or click on podcasts at the top of the page and go to that show. You'll see the most recent show. But you'll also see a search field on the right side. Now, that search field searches just the show that you're looking at. So if you go to ARC365, for example, or the archaeology show, uh, for that matter, and you type something in, it's only going to search that show. Okay, So you can narrow it down if you know that what you're looking for is on that particular show. Or if you just want to search that show, you know, just for the heck of it. I guess the third way is each one of our episodes has tags at the bottom, and those tags are linked to all the other tags of that of that type. So, two ways you can use tags is you can uh, look at the bottom of an episode, and let's say I put prehistoric as a tag or something like that, especially on Arc 365. You can click on that tag, and you'll see all the other shows in the Arc 365 realm that were tagged prehistoric. It's kind of a cool way to do it. Uh, A lot of our stuff is based in a different state or country, and I'll often put that as a tag so you can click on that and see what the other stuff is that was in that state or country uh, applied to that that podcast. The only downside is I'm not very consistent with that. I always put tags in, but the tags are really just like stuff off the top of my head that I've just come up with regarding the episode. So I don't know how good it is or how useful it is in some cases, but it's definitely a way that you um, you can look stuff and help curate what you're listening to. The other way to use the tags, and it might be a better way, is to go to the All Shows page. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar, our All Shows page, which you can get that feed on Google, Stitcher, and iTunes, is every single thing that we put out. So if you're a podcast junkie, you're uh, you're an archaeology junkie, and you just can't get enough, <laughs> you can't get enough APN and enough archaeology uh, podcast and news and interviews and things like that, then subscribe to the All Shows page. 
because that will give you every single podcast that we have in order that they come out. So uh, as they release. Uh, right now, you're getting about, well, a minimum of seven because of the ARC 365 podcast, but probably about nine to sometimes 10 or 11 podcasts a week coming out on the All Shows page. Now, the same tags, the same exact post actually from the Shows page goes to the All Shows page. So if you search prehistoric as a tag on the All Shows page, you're going to search through every single thing on the APN. The only exception is a couple of the shows that we started with, their back catalogs didn't quite make it all to the APN. But everything in the past three years, if you're listening to this in December of 2013, uh, sorry, 2017, I don't even know what year it is, then uh, everything in the past three years will be on there for sure. And you can search the entire APN using those tags. Now, the All Shows page also has its own search field, which is basically just mirrors the, the search field on the homepage because of the way that works. So... Anyway, that's pretty cool. Um, so more on ARC365 is we finally have a team set up. If you're interested in writing for ARC365, now we have the resources. We just need people to distill these down into bite-sized chunks. So you don't need to even be a solid writer. We'll go over it. We'll make sure it looks good before it gets right into the podcast. But we need people to continue to uh, help. We've got a team right now that's setting up all the topics for 2018. Yes, we are continuing this into 2018. And we just need people to go through those resources and, and like I said, distill the, the resources down that we'll give you and make it into about a 500-page, 500-word uh, um, essay, basically. That's more of a conversational style because I'm going to read these. Uh, I might find somebody else to do some of them, but I'm going to read most of them. So um, I usually read them through first to make sure it is readable, but uh, we're, we're trusting on you to distill the information and bring it down. So if you're interested in that, chris at archaeologypodcastnetwork.com. Um, is my email, or you can uh, tweet to me at archeowebby at a r c h e o w e b b y, um, or you can always tweet to arcpodnet arcpodnet. Okay, so that's arc three sixty five. Now I want to talk about. Uh, let's bring in some some actual content here because I've been having this conversation lately. Uh, archaeology as public outreach. I'm a very I'm a very big fan of. Uh, uh, the requirement that people should be treating archaeology as public outreach. What do I mean by that? Well, we spend a lot of time, scientists in general spend a lot of time studying exactly what they want to study. You know, if you're a uh, you know, high-altitude basket weaver, then you're going to study high-altitude basket weaving. That's really a thing, actually. Um, but anyway, if you're, but my point is we get kind of focused. We get kind of heads down. Those movies where People are, uh, you know, in their office surrounded by stacks and stacks of paperwork or they're in a library and they got books open all around them. That's pretty much archaeologists. It's pretty much all scientists in, in one way or another. But an archaeologist, that's how it is. And we love studying what we're studying. We're in it because we're, we're, we enjoy history. But sometimes we forget that we have to tell people about it. And one of the ways that obviously I do that is through the podcast network. And that's why I started the podcast network. That's why I started my first podcast was to talk about archaeology to tell people about what we're doing in a, in a very matter-of-fact way with the CRM Archaeology Podcast. And then I started the network because I had so many more topics I wanted to talk about. And I knew other people had voices as well. So the, people, the other people that have podcasts on this network also have something to say. And they're doing their own part for public outreach um, via their shows. And it's fantastic. So uh, I'm giving a paper at the... Uh, actually, I gave it yesterday, if you're listening to this on the day that it releases... Um, so I gave it uh, Friday, December 1st at the Washington, D.C. Um, edition or version, I guess the annual meeting of the American Association for Anthropology or the AAAs. I was invited to be part of a session on podcasting. And my paper is really about podcasting as digital preservation. And uh, if you go to the APN website in the About section, um, scroll down to the bottom, and that's where we have some stuff for Tristan and I and anyone else that wants to send stuff to us that are hosts of the APN. This is where we have everything online that we've we've done. I've got some other interviews I've done, some video stuff I've done. But I recorded my presentation, uh, and it'll be up there available for you to see. So go check that out at uh, arcpodnet.com and then click the About tab or the, the, team pe- the team page. So anyway, mine is about podcasts as digital preservation. And what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is we are collecting a ton of data And everybody's worried about digital preservation right now. How do you record and save this digital data? How do you do these things? How do you take all these numbers and these these figures and all these things that we're collecting on on an archaeological site? How where do we save this stuff so that it's going to be available? You might just say, well, put it on some hard drives, uh, put it on some whatever medium of choice. But it's a more complicated question than that because you have to worry about file formats. 
you know, I might have a PDF on this ultra secure whatever that's not going to degrade certifiably for 1,000 years or something, and that digital information will still be there. That's fantastic. But what if nobody knows how to open a PDF in 500 years? Okay, that's a, that's a thing. I mean, the, the great thing about paper and stone tablets and walls and stuff like that is we can still read them. <laughs> There's no file formats to worry about. But in the digital age. You have to be incredibly concerned with file formats. We go over some of this stuff on the Archaeotech podcast. We actually just had an entire episode on file formats, so go check that out. Um, But as far as digital preservation and public outreach goes, I take it kind of a step farther, and I say, well, I think podcasts can be one way of sort of uh, initially a digital preservation because the the podcasts are inherently digital because they're audio files kept on the internet, okay? That is, by definition, digital. It's ones and zeros. Um, but going a step farther, it comes full circle. So let's take a typical archaeology site. Uh, let's take a, a habitation site, which means somebody lived there. Okay, so people came to this area. They lived there. They died there. They got married there, or if they do that. They joined up with there. They had kids there. They raised children there. They did all these things there, right? They hunted. They they gathered. They, <laughs> they did whatever they're going to do. They created projectile points, arrowheads, spear points, whatever you want. They did all this stuff in one spot. Well, they left at some point, or they were all killed. One way or another, they no longer started using the area, and it eventually became covered in additional soil over the thousands of years or even hundreds of years, depending on the environment. Um, so anyway, it was covered up, and then let's say this year, somebody digs it up. Okay, somebody digs that up. They do a bunch of analysis. They come up with these stories based on the artifacts that they found. They come up with these detailed descriptions of the artifacts, detailed descriptions of the site, and based on that and other knowledge that they have of that culture, they come up with these narratives that say, well, we think that this was happening and this was happening and this was happening. Now, if I bring that person onto a podcast and they start talking about in a detailed way about this site, now not only is that narrative stored in a podcast digitally on the internet versus in a report somewhere buried in a BLM file cabinet in a place where nobody's ever going to visit, sorry, Ely, Anyway, uh, now not only is that story stored in that digital file, in that podcast, in a way that every single person on the planet, except for deaf people, but soon coming soon, you know, we'll, we'll be able to uh, uh, have the resources to make it so all people can actually get to this. But that's in a place that everybody can get to it. Now, all those people, including people not just in the region where this was found, not just in the, the district where this was found or, or something like that, But all over the world, somebody in India, for example, could be listening to this podcast, and now that cultural knowledge of that site and that area and those people is in their head, okay? When they're having a conversation with somebody, they might say, oh, you know, did you hear about this? And, you know, it was really cool. People were living over here, and they were doing this thing. Now it's in somebody else's head. Can you see where I'm going with this? So digital preservation, uh, podcasts as digital preservation are also public outreach because We collect the information, we disseminate the information to a wide variety of people. I mean, three to 5,000 people a month listen to this podcast, over 100,000 people a month listen to all the shows on the APN. And that's a lot of people, okay? That's a lot of heads for this information to get into. And then people like to talk about what they know, just inherently, we're humans, we do that. So that information ends up getting into the heads of other people, okay? And that's how cultural information is traditionally transferred. And I think that's how cultural information is going to continue to be transferred, even though we live in a digital age and everybody's always got their heads in their smartphones or on their computers or on some sort of screen, we still tell stories. We still like to talk. We still like to do things. We listen to, we watch movies. We, you know, listen to audiobooks. We do different things. And this information gets in our head and it comes out in our conversations. Okay. We just need to make sure that the right information is getting out and that it's not a game of telephone where somebody listens to the podcast and six degrees down the line, it's a completely different story. So we keep putting this stuff out. We keep talking about it. And we keep promoting it. And that to me is archaeology as public outreach in a nutshell. We'll be back in a second. This network is supported by our listeners. You can become a supporting member by going to arcpodnet.com slash members and signing up. As a supporting member, you have access to high quality downloads of each show and a discount at our future online store and access to show hosts on a members only Slack team. For professional members, we'll have training shows and other special content offered throughout the year. Once again, go to arcpodnet.com slash members to support the network and get some great extras and swag in the process. That's arcpodnet.com slash members. 
Okay, welcome back to the Archaeology Show. This is episode 30, Ramblings of, uh, well, an archaeologist. This is just me talking this episode. So as you just heard in that ad, uh, we are listener-supported, okay? And I just wanted to, to have a, a couple quick things, uh, and then this will end the podcast, actually, about what that means for us. So uh, over the past, I guess, five years, when I had my first podcast, the Serum Archaeology Podcast, and then over the past three years with the APN, the, the common model for podcast um, monetization, making money with your podcast, is to uh, put ads on it. Uh, that's the common model for everywhere. I mean, I, we, uh, we just saw ads on the watching the new Star Trek Discovery, and it really upsets me because I'm paying for CBS All Access, and I'm getting ads. What the heck? Anyway, um, so for the APN, <laughs> I don't, I, you, you'll never hear a Blue Apron ad on here. You'll never hear a stamps.com ad. You'll never hear um, an Audible ad, although Audible is something I, I probably actually would consider doing, but they don't talk to the likes of us anyway. Anyway, um, I want to give you guys stuff that you can actually benefit from. So until we have a, a, a decent ad structure, like if we can advertise for you know archaeology magazines and things like that, and places where you can get additional information about archaeology and public outreach, outreach and stuff, if you're running an organization like that, please get a hold of me and we will put an ad because I think that's something our listeners would actually want to hear and would actually benefit from. But I don't want to serve you guys up ads for things that you can't benefit from. So one of the ways we've tried to get around this is to become listener supported. That's the buzzword for that. It's just like NPR or anything else. And over the summer, we set up a membership system. Now we came up with five tiers of membership. This may change over time and we're probably going to add things to these tiers as we go along. But Right now, we have a $5, 10 and $20 a month level. It's the supporting, standard, and professional members, okay? And if you go to arcpodnet.com forward slash members, you can follow along with this and uh, find out exactly what that means and, and what the membership is. But I'm going to talk about it right now. So anyway, there is a free trial period. So if you want to try out membership and then see what the resources are that are available, uh, two members, then you can go check that out. You can, uh, you can, you can free trial it. I'm not going to send you all the swag that we send, uh, until your trial's over. <laughs> so don't try that one. Um, but at the supporting level, it, it really is just, a um, all these levels are intended to just be a thank you, you know, thank you for supporting us. Basically, um, you're supporting us at whatever level you want to contribute at, you know, whatever you think you're getting out of this, um, and whatever you can afford, quite frankly. So, the supporting level is $5 a month. That's an APN sticker. I'll send you that in this nice little card that I made that's actually functional. Got some information on it. Plus, you'll have access to our high-quality downloads, which I mentioned earlier. But what that means, that means two things. The high-quality downloads uh, feed is as soon as these episodes are edited and then error-checked. Yes, we do do that. I do make mistakes, but uh, and some of them get through. However, I listen to these you know, probably a dozen times before they go out. So, anyway... As soon as they're done, it gets uploaded to that uh, to that website, and you have access to it. So not only do you have access to the show early before it releases on its normal schedule, but you have access to the show in a higher quality download. Now, right now, we're doing three uh, types of high quality downloads. So you get a 128 kilobyte per second MP3 file as your normal iTunes or Stitcher or Google download, whatever you're doing. And that's the one that's on the normal pages as well if you just listen in the audio editor. Now, if you're an audiophile or you've got some really good headphones and you just like to listen to stuff at a better quality, then the high-quality downloads file will give you a 320 kilobit, uh, kilobytes per second uh, MP3 file, which is the highest quality MP3 file that I can create with uh, Adobe Audition. But you'll also get a FLAC audio file, which can be played on just about anything, and an Apple AIFF file, so that can be played in iTunes or something like that. But those are lossless. They're massive. They're like a gigabyte in size for an hour-long show. Um, but you just download it, and you can listen to it at your leisure, okay, in that sort of high-quality format. Now, some people don't care about that, but I think I look at it more of a, more of as, um, as an early release as well. So if you don't care about the high-quality downloads, just download the MP3 one, and then you can get it whenever you want. You can listen to it wherever you want. And I think that's pretty cool and uh, and pretty handy. At the standard level, you you not only get those things, but you get access to our members only Slack team. Slack is a team communication device, and we'll add your email to the Slack team. And it's pretty cool. Uh, we're having some really good conversations over there right now. There's channels for each one of the shows, so you can go in and discuss an episode with the show hosts or other fans of the show. And uh, in the general chat right now, there's a discussion about whether um, you know 
uh, archaeology uh, is inherently destructive, and your gut reaction is probably yes, although there's some serious caveats to that. So we're talking about that right now. We'll also send you five of your favorite show stickers in addition to the APN sticker. So you've got six stickers total. Um, you'll get a discount at our online store of currently 20%. I've got to change the website. It actually says 15%. You get extended interviews and bonus content. Uh, we don't have a lot of that right now, but anytime something like that happens, you'll get access to it and nobody else will. Um, and other miscellaneous audio that we put up. So at the professional level, you add all that stuff, plus we throw in um, a t-shirt and a coffee mug and the rest of the APN show stickers. So you'll get all of our stickers. I think there's 13 right now. And you'll get a coffee mug, which is amazing. I use it all the time. And you'll get an APN t-shirt. And that's about a $40 value right there with all those things. Actually, I think it's... I think it's a little more. It's actually about a $60 value I think when I add the stickers in. Anyway, you'll also get on the Slack team uh, access to the podcast focus group for new shows um, channel, which is basically, we basically ask you, hey, we're thinking about this as a new show. What do you think? You know, what would you like to see out of this? Or it's a way for you to propose new shows. Not that anyone can't propose new shows, but this is just a, an extra level that you can go to to actually have an in-depth conversation about what the new show would be. And then finally, learning content uh, and professional training. This has been the most challenging thing for me is getting that stuff up there. Right now we have a really great um, Rock Art 101 video up there from Dr. Alan Gold, who's a world-renowned rock art expert. And we've got some other things that are just need to be edited and thrown up there. But we're going to be putting content up there periodically. There's no real schedule for it, but just extra stuff. So periodically, things will go up in there and you'll uh, you'll have access to that. So that's APN membership in a nutshell. Um, feel free to gift a membership or, um, you know, whatever you want to do. We can uh, we can work out all those things. If you don't see the option that you want to see on there, just send me an email, chris at archaeologypodcastnetwork.com, and we'll work it out. The whole membership site is a new thing for us, and we're trying to, trying to figure out what all that means. Um, and I've got some possible free pro memberships that I'll announce here shortly. But I just wanted to mention, before I do that, the other fantastic shows in the APN, I've already mentioned a few, but Archaeotech, where we talk about technology and archaeology and how that intersects. Archie Fantasies or Archaeological Fantasies is a great show. Um, it's our most listened to show, most downloaded show. And it's Sarah Head, Ken Fader, and Jeb Card talking about uh, pseudo-archaeological topics, getting behind the stories, talking about the real science behind it, talking to the experts, and and getting behind the, uh, you know, it's not just ancient aliens. It's <laughs> it's it's There's a lot more to it than that. Um, we also have one by uh, called Heritage Voices, hosted by uh, Lyle Balenqua and Jessica Yaquinto, and um, they do a fantastic job uh, talking about Native American concerns and, and many, many other things uh, on their show. The CRM Archaeology Podcast is my original show. If you're interested in professional contract archaeology, this is the show that talks about that. And the, uh, the flip side of that, which is a very similar show, but from a different perspective, is the Women in Archaeology podcast. These are academic and CRM professionals, and they talk about issues in archaeology from their perspective, and it's fantastic. It's a really great show. Um, we have a bunch more shows uh, that are up there. Um, some of them are more frequent than others. Prehistories is a great one, talking about stories in archaeology and, and different books and fiction and then bringing in the, the real side of it. So anyway, there's a few that I've uh, not mentioned, but they're up there. Go check it out, archpodnet.com. Okay, finally, as promised, some pro memberships for free. So we have some volunteer positions that we need to fill. I would love to pay for these positions, but we need more memberships, quite frankly. So um, as soon as we do, then we'll start we'll start making these paid positions. But uh, right now, we're looking at volunteers to help uh, do our link checking, um, link and post checking. Basically, every time an episode releases, go there, click on all the links, make sure everything works as advertised. Make sure the posts look good. Uh, it's just a third set of eyes because things get missed, and we just really need that. I'm really, really um, obsessed with quality control on that. And I can look at something 100 times and just miss one thing every single time. I don't know how that works. I mean, you know how it is. You write a paper or something, and you read over it, and you're like, this is perfect. And then it finally comes back, and you're like, damn it, how did I miss that? <laughs> it's the same thing with posts. So we've got that. Um, we've got a, a somebody to help with newsletter creation. I've got templates that I'm creating for our newsletters that we want to send out. We're not doing it yet, but I'm hoping to start that at the first of the year. And it would basically just be curating the information for the following week, which will be out there already. So it just needs somebody to put it together and hit send. That's real. That's really it. But um, you know, it's not a lot of work, but but uh, it does it does add up. And then finally, we have some 
social media positions, some posting positions. We have a bunch of stuff that's maybe, you know, five, 10, maybe 20 minutes of work a day at that. Um, and, and probably not even that much. Um, a Slack team moderator would be great. Somebody to respond every time somebody has a message in Slack or something like that that needs a, a response to. Just somebody who it's their job to to respond to that. Um, social media moderator for our Facebook and Twitter accounts, you know, things like that. We need people to to stay on top of these things. And again, like I said, it's not that much work, but um, when you add all this stuff up, it's a lot of work for one or two people to do. You know, like Tristan and I, Tristan, the co-founder. It's a lot of work for just the two of us to do that stuff. So um, as a reward, as long as you're doing it and you're doing a good job, quite frankly, I can't have people like, you know, uh, you know, sorry for the language, but half-assing it. We've had that before. Uh, we need people that can do this, do a good job, and be consistent about it. You will have a pro membership. I'll send you all the swag. I don't care. Um, do this for a month before I do that because I don't want you to start up, you know, Get all your get your T-shirt and mug, and then say, "Nope, not gonna do it anymore." <laughs> I want a month out of you. Do it for a month. I will send you all the swag for free. Uh, so that's at least a sixty dollars value. Plus, you'll be a pro member to the APN for as long as you are working for the APN um, and doing that. Now, again, like I said, it's not that much work, so um, it's definitely worth the the twenty bucks a month and the added value you get from all that. So. All right. Sorry for uh, not having an interview or something else fun this week. I just thought we needed to get this done. And uh, and it's been a little bit of a slow fall for April and I. If we have some travel issues and some other scheduling issues. So um, hopefully we'll be back next time with another fantastic interview. We want to hear what you think about this show and what you want to hear on this show. If you have any interview suggestions, let me know. Chris at archaeologypodcastnetwork.com. And please go check out the member site. Um, uh, at uh, arcpodnet.com forward slash members. And also, if you want a 15% discount in our store, Holiday 15, use that as the discount code. You can That'll work until December 31st at midnight. Holiday 15 will get you 15% off anything in the ArcPodnet store, including the podcast training. And uh, if you look at that, that's not super cheap. So, um, you know, I've got some stuff. If you're interested in podcasting, you can use that 15% discount on that. So at the very least, go grab a coffee mug because they are amazing. They're nice and thick. They're heavy. Great for those cold nights in the winter. You know, it'll keep your hands nice and warm, keeps your drink warm, and it's uh, it's just a, a great mug. Um, and then the stickers are the stickers are awesome, too. We had some crappier stickers before, but these are amazing stickers. They're weatherproof. They will stand the test of time. They're vinyl. They're really great, really awesome stickers. That's why they're like, I think, $1.50 or $3 or something like that for the stickers. So, And there's some sticker packs in there, too, that we put together. So, All right. Thanks a lot for that. And uh, we'll be back next time. And have a happy holiday season, whatever you support. And uh, thanks a lot. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Archaeology Podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. You can provide feedback using the contact button on the right side of the website at www.archaeologypodcastnetwork.com forward slash archaeology. Or you can email chris at archaeologypodcastnetwork.com. Please like and share the show wherever you saw it so more people can have a chance to listen and learn. Send us show suggestions and follow ArcPodNet on Twitter and Instagram. This show was produced by the Archaeology Podcast Network. Opinions are solely those of the hosts and guests of the show. However, the APN stands by their hosts. Special thanks to the band Sea Hero for letting us use their song, I Wish You'd Look. Check out their albums on Bandcamp at seahero.bandcamp.com. Check out our next episode in two weeks, and in the meantime, keep learning. Keep discovering new things and keep listening to the Archaeology Podcast Network. Have an awesome day. This show is produced by Chris Webster and Tristan Boyle and was edited by Chris Webster. This has been a presentation of the Archaeology Podcast Network. Visit us on the web for show notes and other podcasts at www.archpodnet.com. Contact us at chris at archaeologypodcastnetwork.com. Thanks again for listening to this episode and for supporting the Archaeology Podcast Network. If you want these shows to keep going, consider becoming a member for just $7.99 US dollars a month. That's cheaper than a venti quad eggnog latte. Go to archpodnet.com slash members for more info.